If you organize your mind to a certain level of organization, it in turn organizes the whole system. Your body, your emotion, your energies, everything gets organized in that direction. Once all these four dimensions of you, your physical body, your mind, your emotion and the fundamental life energies are organized in one direction. Once you are like this, anything that you wish happens without even lifting a little finger actually. It would help to assist it with activity, but even without doing any activity, you can still manifest what you want. If you organize these four dimensions in one direction and keep it unwavering in that direction for a certain period of time, Right now the problem with your mind is, every moment it is changing its direction. It is like you want to travel somewhere and every two steps if you keep changing your direction, the question of you reaching the destination is very remote unless it happens by chance. So organizing our minds and in turn organizing the whole system and these four basic dimensions of who you are right now, in one direction, if you do this, you are a Kalpavruksha yourself. Anything that you wish will happen. But right now, if you look at your lives, everything that you have wished for till now, if it happens, you're finished. Everything and everybody that you have desired for, if all of that lands up in your house today, could you live with that? So organizing our minds fundamentally means moving from a compulsive state of activity to a conscious state of activity. You might have heard of people for whom they asked for something and beyond all expectations it came true to them, true for them. Generally this happens to people who are in faith. Now, let's say you want to build a house. If you start thinking, oh I want to build a house, to build a house I need fifty lakhs but I have only fifty rupees in my pocket, not possible, not possible, not possible. The moment you say not possible, you are also saying I don't want it. So on one level you are creating a desire that you want something, on another level you are saying I don't want it. So in this conflict it may not happen. If you want life to happen the way you want it, because right now the very crux of your happiness and your well-being is this. If at all if you are unhappy, the only and only reason why you're unhappy is life is not happening the way you think it should happen. That's all it is. So if life is not happening the way you think it should happen, you're unhappy. If life happens the way you think it should happen, you're happy. It's as simple as that. So if life has to happen the way you think it should happen, first of all, how you think, with how much focus you think, how much stability is there in your thought and how much reverberance is there in the thought process will determine whether your thought will become a reality or is it just an empty thought. Or how, how you do not create any impediments for your thought by creating negative thought process. Is something possible or not possible? Is destroying humanity. What is possible and not possible is not your business, it's nature's business. Your business is just to strive for what you want. You are using the past experience of life as a basis for deciding whether something is possible or not possible. Or in other words, you have decided that what has not happened till now cannot happen in your life in future. This is a disgrace to humanity and the human spirit. What has not happened till now on this planet can happen tomorrow. Human beings are capable of making it happen tomorrow. So what is possible and what is not possible is not your business. That is nature's business, nature will decide that. You just see what is it that you really want and strive for that. And if your thought is created in a powerful way without any negativity, without any negative thoughts bringing down the intensity of the thought process, it will definitely manifest. The whole existence today, modern science is proving, is just a reverberation of energy. It is a vibration. Similarly, your thought is also a vibration. If you generate a powerful thought and let it out, it will always manifest itself. So generally, people are using faith as a means to remove the negative thought. 
Today, once you have become thinking human beings, your faith is not too deep. It doesn't matter how much faith you think you have, somewhere doubts always crop up. Right now, the way your minds are made, this moment, if God appears right here, you will not surrender to Him. You will want an investigation whether He is really God or not. With this kind of mind, you should not waste your time on faith. So there is an alternative, which is commitment. If you simply commit yourself to creating what you really care for, now once again, your thought gets organized in such a way, there is no such thing as whether it's possible or not possible. There is no hurdle in your thought process. Your thought flows freely towards what you want. Once this happens, making it happen will also naturally follow. So to create what you really care for, first and foremost thing is that what you want must be well manifested in your mind, that this is what I want. Is that what you really want, you must look at it because any number of things in your life you have thought this is it, the moment you reach there you realize that's not it, it's the next one and the next one and the next one. So what is it that one really wants is one thing. First of all, we must explore. Once that is clear and we are committed to creating it, now there is a continuous process of thought in that direction. Once you can maintain a steady stream of thought without changing direction, definitely this is going to happen in your life or it will definitely manifest as a reality in your life. So, either you make this human form into a kalpa viksha or you make it into one big mess which is happening all over. So at every stage in our life, we tend to think this is it. If this one thing happens, everything will be fine with my life. You reach there and you realize that's not it and you postpone it to something else and something else, this is going on. The first and foremost thing is, you must be clear what is it that you really want. If you do not know what you want, the question of creating it doesn't arise. If you look at what you really want, what every human being wants is, he wants to live joyfully, he wants to live peacefully. In terms of its relationships, he wants it to be loving and affectionate. Or in other words, all that any human being is seeking for is pleasantness within himself, pleasantness around him. If this pleasantness, if it happens in our body, we call this health and pleasure. If it happens in our mind, we call this peace and joy. If it happens in our emotion, we call this love and compassion. If it happens in our energy, we call this blissfulness and ecstasy. This is all that a human being is looking for. Whether he is going to his office to work, he wants to make money, build a career, build a family, he sits in the bar, sits in the temple, he is still looking for the same thing. Pleasantness within, pleasantness around. If this is what we want to create, I think it's time we addressed it directly and commit ourselves to creating it. So you want to create yourself as a peaceful human being, joyful human being, loving human being, a pleasant human being on all levels. And do you also want a world like this? A peaceful world, a loving world, a joyful world. No, no, I want greenery, I want food. When we say a joyful world, that means everything that you want has happened. So this is all that you're looking for. So all that you need to do is commit yourself to creating it, to create a peaceful, joyful and loving world, both for yourself and everybody around you. Every day in the morning, if you start your day with this simple thought in your mind, that today, wherever I go, I will create a peaceful, loving and joyful world. If you fall down hundred times in the day, what does it matter? For a committed man, there is no such thing as failure. If you fall down hundred times, hundred lessons to be learned. If you commit yourself like this to creating what you really care for, now your mind gets organized. Once your mind gets organized, the way you think is the way you feel, your emotion will get organized. Once your thought and emotion is organized, your energies will get organized in the same direction. 
Once your thought, emotion and energies are organized, your very body will get organized. Once all these four are organized in one direction, your ability to create and manifest what you want is phenomenal. You are the creator in many ways.